The numbers are rolling. Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, excuse me, <laughs> the pillar and ground of the truth. Good morning. I was asked a question recently, a very good question, I would expect no less, from a beloved brother. And the question was a simple one. But it's a, it's a question that resonates with a lot of us, saints. Should saints pray for lost people? Hmm? Should saints, saved people, pray for lost people? Well, the simple answer to that question is yes. However, there is a point, there is a point when you and I as saints praying for lost people is vanity. Okay? And we're, we're going to look at that. We're going to look at that. Give you an example. Give you an example. Just an example from a personal perspective. Do I pray for the individual from Blackpool? No, not at all. Why? He's made his choice. He is an enemy of the Lord. Okay? His, his damnation is just. Okay? He's going to get what's coming to him. Okay? Uh, I don't pray for him. No. Of course not. Why? Because he's an enemy of the Lord. The impossible is possible with God. We have to remember that, saints, but we also have to remember this. We also have to remember this. That no man except the man, Christ Jesus, has absolutely no right to tell you how or what to pray. Nobody has that right. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Okay? Yeah. You see this? I don't know if you can see it on there. There's that uh, X with the P in it. It's a satanic symbol. Uh, you can faintly see it there. This, you see that? This is a Bible missal, as it is called, written by Jesuits. And it is full of repetitious prayer okay um it's it's quite disgusting this this whole thing is woo, really disgusting and disturbing okay satan here through the missile okay call it the bible missile and remember rome did give you the bible God gave you the scriptures. There's a big difference. But within this, there's not. There's like all kinds of prayers. Let, let us pray. And, 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 oh, and here, i got to show you this. i got to show you this. Okay. <laughs> Check that one out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, uh, yeah. Woohoo! That's something. That's something else, boy. Okay. Man, ex the only one, the only man that has any right to tell you what, how to pray is the Lord. But see, you got to remember also that prayer is a dialogue. It is a relational dialogue between you and the Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? you got to remember that prayer is relational. If you bust down prayer to just go in there for petitions, which we do, but if that's all that prayer is on to you, that, that, there's a problem with that. There's a problem with that. Okay? There is a problem with that. But I, I want to I wanna pose to you a question before we get into some uh, scripture here. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And please read along with me, word for word, verse by verse of the scriptures we're going to be looking at. Read along with me, be a Berean. Search these scriptures daily, whether these things be so. And of course, read along with me because I make mistakes. My mouth goes quicker than the brain. Okay, so read along with me. I want to give you this question to, to roll around in your head while we're, while we're musing upon this topic. 
And think about this. For some unspoken reason, when you talk to a Christian, they seem to have, they seem to catapult off of this premise that man is good. Or at the least, that man has gotten better since the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Why, why do you think the enemy is so adamant about avoiding personal accountability and brokenness? Why? Why do you think that? You talk to most Christians, and it's an unspoken thing. But you can see it in the way they present things, the way they talk to you about things, and stuff like that. It's on this premise that man, the undercurrent, is good. Have you ever noticed that? And the question that I want to leave with you as we go through this about praying for lost people, and yes, 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 yes. But the thing is, where is the line when someone crosses it where they don't, where they can't, not that the Lord cannot save them, but because of their own accord, they've gone so far that they can, it's to come back, it's almost impossible for them. The Lord can save anybody, yes he can, but there is a point within a man, within a woman, where they will go so far, um, Joan Crawford, for example, Joan Crawford, brother sent a link for this. Uh, and uh, it was pretty interesting. If you don't know who Joan Crawford is, good. Okay? But she was a famous actress. We'll leave it at that. On her deathbed, there were people praying for her. And I think the quote was something like, Don't you dare pray to God for me. She died and went to hell. When does it become vanity on our parts? And see... That's where the relational part of prayer comes into play, okay? I can't sit here and tell you how to pray or who you should pray for, okay? Only the Lord can do that, okay? And see, Rome tries to take the place of God and gives you a whole book on how to pray, what to pray, when to pray, blah, 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 okay? But is man getting better? See, and these stupid atheists, and I'm being very polite with you atheists when I say that. You stupid atheist thinks man's getting better. And see that, they call it, uh, there's a term for this thing, progressive Christianity. There's this thing, too, that man is getting better. Has mankind gotten better since the death, burial, and resurrection? There is this, like I said, there's this unspoken undercurrent within a lot of Christianity that you, and these Christians that you meet, where they will say, well, yeah, really. Genesis, I'm just going to get to this, and then we're going to get to the main meaning of the text, so that we're, what we're going to be talking about. Genesis 6, 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Okay? Psalm 39, just a couple of one-verse references here. Just a couple of one-verse references. Psalm 39, just one verse. Verse 5. Behold, thou hast made my days as in hand breadth, from thumb to pinky. Okay, or is it from palm to uh, the bird finger? I don't recall, but it's not that long. Okay, in comparison to eternity. Okay? Behold, thou hast made my days as in hand breath, and mine ages as nothing before thee. Because God lives outside of our time. God is not constrained to our time. Okay? Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Silah. Psalm 62, Psalm 62, one verse again, <coughs> verse 9. <coughs> Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree 
are a lie. Well, what bigger lie than ye shall be as gods, right? To be laid in the balance. They are altogether lighter than vanity. Hmm. That's Old Testament, Brad. You're right. You're right. Okay. Go to John chapter 1. John, you'll see how this fits into what we're talking about. So bear with me. John chapter 1, verses 1 on verse 3. In the beginning was the capital W Word. And the capital W Word was with God. And the capital W Word was God. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Okay? And without Him was not anything made that was made. God said. Verse 3 in Genesis 1. God said. Spoke. The Word made flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Got it? Okay? Let's skip to verses 10 on to verse uh, 11. He was in the world. The Lord. God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? He was in the world. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Hmm. John 2, 24 and 25. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them, because he knew all men. Not relationally, you got to remember that. Okay? God knows who every single solitary one of you is. But he does not know all of you, obviously, through a relation, relationship, as through adoption, going the way of the cross, being broken of your self-righteousness, being contrite, having godly sorrow, and fear of the Lord. And in that state that happens in a fell swoop, you cry out to him. Okay? Very simple. Very simple. But Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. And needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Okay? Well, uh, speaking of Romans. Romans, okay, that, that's Old Testament still, Brad. You're right. Romans. Chapter 1, 28 out of verse 32. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. This is where Calvin came up with the reprobate doctrine, okay? Which Stephen Anderson perpetuated and brought, you know, heightened it a little bit, okay? This thing that they're, um, that when you are given over to a reprobate mind, God can't save you. That is not true. Okay? God can save anybody. But see, here's the thing. It's not at force. You've got to remember that. God is not coercive. God does not force his salvation onto anyone. Okay? He doesn't. He doesn't. Okay? You can be given over to a reprobate mind, and then the next day the Lord break you, and then he save you. Okay? That could happen. The impossible is possible with God. You have to remember that always, brethren. He, even with that, that guy from Blackpool, the impossible is possible. Yes, it is. Is it probable? No. No. That guy, specifically, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. Yes, the impossible could happen. But see, it would have to take a miracle from the Lord himself in order to procure it. And God's not a God who's going to force salvation on someone who thinks they're already righteous and they're lost and going to hell. See how that works? Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, 
maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers. Huh, this is describing that guy really good, isn't it? Yeah. Backbiters, haters of God. Despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful who knowing, just knowing, the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Misery loves company. Hmm? And also, 2 Timothy chapter 3, the obvious. Okay? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 5. Is mankind getting better? Has mankind gotten better since the death, burial, and resurrection? 2 Timothy 3, 1 on 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. There you see that again. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, Fierce, despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded. Lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God. I ah, just described Christianity in its whole, didn't it? Didn't he? Having a form of godliness, a form of it, but denying the power thereof. And of course, the power thereof is what? Who? Jesus Christ. From such turn away. Now, think about this as we go through this. Turn to Luke 18. Okay? Turn to Luke 18. Is mankind getting better? Atheists tell you yes. <laughs> Some Christians, like I said, most most Christians on the onset know better than to say, well, yeah, man, man is good. But just scratch them a little bit, and it comes out that y they actually think that. There's this unspoken undercurrent that Christianity bases itself off of that basically man is good, which is not true. What does this have to do with prayer and praying for lost people? Let's find out. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 on to verse 8. Okay? And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Okay? Now, if you just stop right there, it's like, see? So I'm, I'm going to continue praying in a vain shoe, in a vain way, and vanity for someone who's already made their choice not coming back and see the Lord is the one who how many of you brethren seriously come on seriously let's be honest with one another be honest with yourself be honest with the Lord how many of you have been praying for someone and then all of a sudden one day the Lord's like don't what do you mean? Don't, don't, don't pray for it. Oh, come on. Come on. How many? Hmm? How many of you have had that happen? It's like, hmm. Hmm? You're in prayer. You've been praying for someone. I mean, for years and years and years. And the evidence always points to that one that has gone so far that they won't come back. How many of uh, how many of you have had that happen? Okay. But if you stop there, it's like, well, hey, hmm. just keep reading. Saying there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward. He said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, 
Yet because this widow troubleth me, annoys him, I will avenge her, lest by her continually, continual coming she weary me. Now see, some will come to this and think of a way to justify what? Vain repetition, because they think they will be heard for their much speaking. Okay? The Lord is using this guy merely as an example. Prove it to you. Absolutely. Keep reading. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge saith. Okay? Here's this guy who doesn't fear God or regard man, but because this gal is coming to him, annoying him, more or less, uh, lest by her continual coming she weary me, okay, then he's going to do it. And see, a lot of Christianity tells you, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying with this premise as if you're going to annoy God. It's like, oh, fine, I'll just give it to you to shut you up. Whoa, 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 okay, now, saints, you, you're watching saints, right away, that ought to be like, wait a minute, it, right, right, keep reading. See, he was using the unjust judge as an example. Verse 7, and shall not God avenge his own elect? If someone like an unjust judge is going to do that because a, a woman badgers him to death, will not God avenge his own elect? And in this context, it is talking about the Hebraic Jews because this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Yes. Okay, that is to be intuited there. Okay. But see, he's making that example. Okay, you got a, you got a lost guy who's getting badgered by a woman. He's like, I'll fight. I'm going, I'll fight. Just to show. That's not how God operates. He's giving the example. Hey, if a lost person will do that, what, you think God won't? See, be careful with that one, brethren. Be very careful with this one. Because how many of you have heard that? Keep praying. Keep praying. Uh, and they come to this. It's like, wait a minute. So what? We're going to pester God to death until he finally caves in? How, then... How, how strong is our God then? Think about that. Think about that. Oh, some of you cute people out there. It's like, well, he listened to Joshua. That was a totally different dispensation, number one. And number two, God was making Joshua known unto the people. Hey, the, the rightful successor of Moses, okay? A lot of things went into that. That's a that's not an example or a thing that you can use, even though some of you trying to be cute would try. Okay, it doesn't work like that. Okay, God is saying in this, if you got an unjust judge who will do something out of being badgered, how about what? What God? What God's not going to? Who's going to be entreated by His elect? Okay. Hear what the unjust judge saith, verse six, verse seven, and shall not the and shall not God avenge His own elect? which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Hmm. Shall he find faith on the earth? So, men are to pray. Now this, for our instruction in righteousness, is twofold. Okay? We are to pray unto the Lord. Yes, according to his will. Okay? But also it is to show us that, hey, if even a lost person would cave in eventually, don't you think for one second that God will? Okay, cave in under your badgering. It doesn't work that way. All right? All right? Now go to Matthew chapter 6. Go to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 on to verse 15. Now, <laughs> have you ever read any of this? The, uh, the Bible missile? Uh, there you can see the, the thing. That, that's wicked, okay? 
This is written by the Jesuits, okay? This is, uh, it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. Anyway, here in Scripture. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the <laughs> hypocrites are. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. This does not mean, dear brother, when you are in a moment with an individual shoulder to shoulder, and that guy's just on the verge of breaking, and you pray with them in public, that's not what the Lord is condemning there. He's condemning the hit of Roman Catholicism and also at the time and also at this time modern Judaism the Hasidim the, that blend of Judaism which is not scriptural Judaism okay all right that doesn't this does not mean that if you're in public and you're going to pray with someone, that doesn't mean that you can't do it. Okay, that's not what that's talking about. The Lord is clearly bashing this kind of stuff. Okay, that's what it is. Okay, so don't be confused on that. But when you pray again, Hail Mary, full of grapes, blessed be the fruit of the loom. Okay, vain repetition. Because if it were like some, it's like, well, I prayed about the same guy for a couple of years now. That's vain. No. No. Vain repetition is proscribed or prescribed prayer. Okay? That you read mindlessly and just blah, 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 blah. And the thinking, uh, and thinking of the actual doing thereof is going to be productive. That's what our Lord is condemning. Okay? All right? But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think they shall be heard for their much speaking. <laughs> like I told you, if you've never read any of this, this is like, wow, dude. <laughs> wow, that's pretty messed up. I bought that for, uh, what was it? A quarter at a re uh, not a resale shop, but a garage sale too. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of before you ask him. Then you'll be like, well, why pray? It's it's relational, dude. It's relational. Yes, God knows the very fiber of your being, but He wants that one on one with you. Okay. <laughs> is God a God that's far off and not near? Okay? Now, they, <laughs> the harlot Rome calls this the Lord's Prayer. It's not the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is actually John 17. Okay? This is not the Lord's Prayer. Alright? This is a Hebraic Jewish prayer meant for Hebraic Jews. Okay? But, let's read. After this manner, therefore, pray ye. Who is he talking to? This is the Sermon on the Mount. This is the Sermon on the Mount. Doctrine for the Kingdom of Heaven. Okay? Alright? Yeah. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Okay? Now, Instruction in righteousness. In prayer. It's like, good morning, Lord. Thank you for giving me today. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Uh, Lord, lead me and guide me today. Give us this day our daily bread. Lord, could you please provide for me as I need? Okay. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lord, I forgive me of my sins I committed yesterday, even this morning. <laughs> Please, okay? 
You see that? Okay. Okay. If you, for whatever reason, want to recite this, just here's the person. Okay. But when you, like, for example, the Alcoholics Anonymous, which God could be a door handle to them, okay, whatever your higher power is, okay, they would recite this mindlessly. Okay? All right? They would. It becomes just chatter to them. All right? Some people, I've talked to some people, it's like, I prayed the Lord's Prayer for years. Yeah, and you wonder why you're in the state you are because there's no life in it for you, is there? See, this prayer itself is a prayer for the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? All right? Nowhere else within Scripture do you find this repeated other than before the death, burial, and resurrection. But what it gives us is a template as it were. Because, like I said, you, you, you flop on your face in the morning, right? It's like, oh, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you, Lord. Please lead me and guide me. Please, Lord, provide. We need your help, Lord. Please provide for us. Please and please, Lord, forgive me of those wicked things I thought about and what all this nonsense. Okay? It gives us that kind of a template. That it does for our instruction in righteousness. Okay? But see, like like has been addressed before, when you come to the Our Father, which has got a video on that, um, these guys turn this into vain repetition. Okay? So let's continue. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And again, for the template, it's like, oh, Lord, uh, open my eyes to see. <laughs> Please, Lord, slap me upside the head with your word. Keep me from doing things that I want to do. Okay? Now, let's keep reading. Now, here is the dispensational difference. Okay? Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for the kingdom of heaven. During the kingdom of heaven, it's all works. During the kingdom of heaven, if you don't forgive someone, if ye forgive men your their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Is that how it is today? No. <laughs> no, it isn't. It isn't. Okay? This is how it will be during the kingdom of heaven, which is all works, it's all works because you're going to be able to see Jesus Christ on the throne, okay? During the kingdom of heaven, if you don't forgive someone, you're not going to be forgiven. Oh, uh, hey, genius, that's a work, isn't it? Come on, come on. You, you all, even you heretics can got to be like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's a work. Yeah, I know, okay, <laughs> okay? So you don't have, no, today, you, you ought to, sure. Is it a requirement for you to forgive someone today? F salvifically, no. But if you don't, it's going to eat you up inside. You're gonna, your fruit's going to stink. You, know? you get so bad that the Lord will take you and put you on the shelf and you'll be nothing. you go nowhere. Okay? You don't want the Lord to be ashamed of you for eternity, dear saint. Okay? Verse 15. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That is not how it is today. God rightly divides the word of truth. Okay? All right? Now, this was the Sermon on the Mount. Doctrine for the kingdom of heaven while he was on the Mount of Olives, or Mount Olivet. Okay? We know this. Here's something interesting. You go to Luke chapter 11. Now, how many of you have run into this? It's like, so there's a contradiction between Matthew 6 and Luke 11. Because this is uh, another rendition of the uh, prayer here, right? And these, these guys who think they're cute. It's like, see, there's a contradiction. The setting is different there, genius. Sermon on the Mount was done on what? Mount Olivet. This right here. Let's read. The, the setting is different. Okay. He was, he 
said he said that our father which art in heaven the our father okay on the sermon on the mount he says it here in a totally different setting still speaking unto the hebraic jews but in a totally different setting a lot of y'all like to in the gospels point out well, see, that's a that's a contradiction. It's like, whoa, 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 spunky britches. Okay? Hold on. Look at it. Do you know that there have been several occurrences in Scripture where the, these seem to be like right here? So they, these these guys who think they know something, like that Muslim guy. <laughs> like, see, that's a kind of... Dude, dude. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place... Stop. He was praying in a certain place. And you can go ahead and read uh, Matthew, oh, excuse me, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10 ends with him uh, talking to Martha, Martha, Martha. Okay? All right? So here Luke 11 verse 1. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, he wasn't on the mount, Mount of Olives. He wasn't preaching a sermon like he was at Mount Olivet. The setting is different there, genius. Okay? Brethren, remember that the next time if you ever run into that. Now, I've run into this a couple of times. That's why we're including this. I have. It's like there's a contradiction between Luke 11 and Matthew 6. I'm sure that Muslim guy who thinks he's something would probably even bring this up. It's like, do it. He's so he's so so intelligent, huh? It's a different setting. Hence, it's a little different. Let's keep reading, okay? And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, ye, the break Jews, he was sent to none, but to who? The lost sheep of Israel, the Hebraic Jews, not the Hermetic or the Japhethian ones, okay? <laughs> okay? When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive every one that is indebted to us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Okay? Now, it's different, obviously. But the setting is different. But the template also remains the same. Did you notice that? Huh? Okay? All right? Well, watch out for some of these devils, man, who try to trip you up with this kind of stuff. Okay, this, I mean, when you, like, just, like, whoa, whoa stop. And examine it it's like <laughs> the one dude that, that was bringing this up to me when i pointed that out uh oh wow dude and he thought he, you know he was he's christian he thought he knew his stuff he did and then and, it, and it's nothing like that okay it's nothing like that but he was like you know there's a contradiction and it's like they're, they're totally different places two different occurrences not the same one okay his face got as red as a tomato. It's like, <laughs> I feel you. I, I, and that's okay. And that, that turned into a wonderful moment of witnessing. It sure did. But it's like, dude, I, I get it. Okay? You, you didn't know. Now you do. Okay? So, let's keep reading. Okay? And he said unto them, and here again, that comparison. Here's that thing about how we ought to pray and not faint. Okay? And he said unto them, Which of you have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine is in his, for a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, Yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. 
For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he, or will he for a fish give him a serpent? Or if he shall ask an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? Here's the comparison thing again. If ye then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? And the Lord is that Spirit. Call upon the name of the Lord. After He break you, you be a man or a woman and take responsibility. You held the nail. You held the hammer. You put the crown of thorns on His head. Okay? Get the hell scared out of you. And see, see, you lost people don't get this. That that happens shoom, like that. Okay? It does. And when you are at that point, you can't wait. Lord, save me! Okay? All right? But now let's look at uh, some more examples here. In Ephesians chapter 6. Okay? Ephesians chapter 6. Most of us already know these things, but we're going over them to show what the scripture says. Because like I said at the beginning of this video, no man has any right to tell you how or what to pray. That's the dialogue, the relational between you and the Lord. Okay? Dude, I've been in prayer before and the Lord shut me up like that. Because he doesn't want me and him to be talking about that. Hasn't that happened to you? Huh? When you're in prayer, are you just... Blah, 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 blah? Well, I don't hear him audibly. I, I know you don't. Unless you're a crazy whack job. Okay? I know you don't hear him audibly. But you know that he's speaking to you. And then you get into the Word, and then He verifies it. Hadn't this happened to you before? Huh? Or are you just rattling off a prepared list? Are you rattling off a vain repetition? Ephesians 6, verses 10 and 20. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Denying the power thereof, what's the power? The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. <laughs> Gotta remember that myself. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And men of high degree are a lie. Wherefore, take on to you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt with truth, and having, the breast, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and of course, what does the breastplate guard? Your heart, okay? And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Preparation, prepared to be instant in season, out of season, okay? Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take, and here's you Catholics, yeah, and take the helmet of salvation. The helmet covers your brain case. We are, we are to know for certain, Catholic, that when we die, we are going to heaven. We as saints, we know. Why? We have the witness in, our, in, in us. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father. No, the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Okay? 
and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the capitalist spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the capital S spirit. In the capital S spirit. For we don't know how to pray for as we ought. <coughs> See, prayer ought to be a conversation, a dialogue between you, the saint, and the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The problem is that with way too many, it seems to be more of a ba 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 oh and ba 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 as if you are trying to badger the Lord. You see? See, that, that's one of the most dangerous undercurrents of Christianity right there, man. It's right there. You know, I remember, uh, what was that, uh, call her the Joker, uh, Butch Myers, who looks like the Joker. Yeah, you know, she, she, I remember her saying something like, keep after him, after God for what you want. Uh, no, she was doing that, basing it off of covetousness for someone to continually pray, pray for a Maserati or something. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Let's continue, okay? Let's continue, okay? Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We already know that we're supposed to pray for the brethren. We know that. These are pro this is a process we have to go through, brother. Bear with me, okay? Besides, other people need to hear this too. Like I told you, this is beneficial for more. Okay, let's continue. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Okay? Now, go to Philippians 4, verses 1 out of verse 8. We covered this recently. I think it was in the Trump video. Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for my joy and crown. So stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech you, you Odias, you, you Odias, you Odias, and beseech Sintichi, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow. Help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation, not covetousness, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. And we, we address this. This doesn't mean that you be flippant. Okay? It means that you don't fear man. Okay? But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And yes, that's a clear everything. But in everything, by prayer. Pray about it. Pray about it. God might not want to hear what you're praying about. Okay? And if you use your common sense, people, brethren. Okay? You're not going to, I mean, you're a saint. Okay? Are you, I mean, are you really going to go to the Lord with something that you know that he doesn't approve of? Some do. But, I mean, that's, that's the whole relational aspect of prayer. Okay? Dude, you're praying with, to a person. The Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? You're praying to God the Father. Okay? It's... Okay? Remember that. Remember that, brethren. R remember. Remember that, okay? 
And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And of course, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Okay? Now go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 15 on to verse 24. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. That's a big all there. Okay? All right? Hold your place. Romans chapter 12, verses 17 on to 21. Romans 12, 17 on to 21. Recompense to no man. See, that's with an S. It's a verb. Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. And that does not mean compromise. Christianity will have you compromise truth for the sake of getting along. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. No. Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. Okay? If you not being in the same room with someone in order to fulfill this, uh, you do that. Okay? Don't compromise truth. Christianity will have you compromise truth. All the while it's like, no we don't. Well, you guys are telling people to be like the world and win the world. Let's continue. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. That's why we're not stoning false prophets today. Okay? <laughs> they're they're, they're, they're going to have their hands full at the great white throne. Okay? All right? Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Scripture. If he thirsts, give him drink. Desiring the sincere milk of the word, wash them in the water of the word. Okay? For in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome, be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Go back to 1 Thessalonians, picking up at verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Many, <laughs> many Christians have said, made the statement, if your prayer life is a mess, your regular life is going to be a mess. There is truth to that. There is truth to that. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Everything. That's a, you know, what you do, you take your little pen. Everything. Circle it. Everything. Everything means everything. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. <laughs> concerning you. Quench not the spirit. How do you quench the spirit? By going your own way, not doing anything he tells you to do. Ignoring him, not listening. Even, you know, you can do that. A saint, you know. Remember, again, God doesn't hold a gun at your head forcing you to do anything. Okay? Un contrary to what even some King James Bible, even Christians want you to believe. Okay? God is not a God of coercion. Okay? You need to make the right choices. He's not going to make them for you, Calvinist. 
okay? Devil, okay? You have to make the right decision, all right? And you can quench the spirit by not listening to him. The, you know, hold your place again. Let's, let's touch this while we're here. Uh, this is also reiterated in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Oh, verses 11 on to 13. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. Dead to that. Dead to ourselves. Okay? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. Quenching the spirit. This does not mean salvation. You go the Lord his way, the way of the cross, uh, broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, you call upon his name and he save you. You're once saved, always saved, eternally secure, going to heaven. Okay? But he can deny you <laughs> so many other things. Salvation, no. But grace, mercy, compassion, kindness, blessing, provision, oh, he can, he can really, <laughs> yes. Okay? Let's continue. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Because we are what? In Ephesians, I believe that is uh, chapter 5, verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. He lives within you. Okay? That don't mean that you're a little Christ, okay? Okay, God forbid. I think that a lot of people need to get that whack job thing out of their head. Okay? That comes from Rome, by the way. Let's continue. Despise not prophesying. Prophesying today. Someone who has the Lord within them reading to you the scripture. That's prophesying today. Old Testament prophets are not around today. No matter what Mr. Art Katz would have had you to believe or no matter what some of these wicked Pentecostal charismatics want you to believe, okay? Prove all things. How? Search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. I just lost my place. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. There's only one good. That's God. Abstain from all appearance of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body, that's what a person is, okay? Be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Okay? And also to Let's remind ourselves, because, you know, a lot of people with what we're talking about will take it and try to justify sin and praying in a covetous manner just because they want like a Maserati or something. Uh, the Lord abhorreth the covetous. If you are going to the Lord in a covetous way, meaning that you are just going to the gods like, hey, I need, my, I need a new suit, I need a new car, hey, hey, get that woman over there... <laughs> 1 John chapter 5, 13 under verse 15. A Catholic, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that ye may know that ye have eternal life and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is the confidence that we have in Him that if we ask anything according to His will, he heareth us. And then you got the Pentecostal people who come, well, God wants you to be happy, wealthy, and healthy. Uh, Paul kind of missed that, didn't he? Hmm? He had no certain dwelling place? Huh? Naked and buffeted? Hmm? Hmm? No. God the Father himself, Jesus Christ our Lord, had nowhere to lay his head. According to his will. Okay? According to his will. And God abhorreth the covetous. Remember that. Okay? And if we know that he hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. 
sometimes, dear brethren, you have to just simply ask, Lord, am I, uh, is this your will that I pray for this guy? Or that I pray for this? How many of you do that? Maybe some of you should. Now let's go to 1 Timothy, chapter 2. 1 Timothy, chapter 2. Now let's pay attention. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Pray for all men. You look at that verse, prayer is not the only thing that is mentioned there, is it? Now those are all encompassing prayer. This is true. But yes, right there. I exhort therefore that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Keep reading. Distinction of a difference here. Semicolon. For kings. And for all that are in authority. And it's like, but Brad, do you pray for Biden? No. He's a servant of the Vatican. He knows what he's doing. No, I don't pray for him. I don't pray for Trump. If I pray anything, I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you what I pray for when it comes to this. Lord, <laughs> your will be done, okay? Uh, please keep the devil at bay. Keep him off uh, our backs so we can do the work that you have assigned for us to do, <laughs> okay? But look at verse 2 again. For kings and for all that are in authority, why? That we may live a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians 5. You knew we were going here. Uh, verse 11 to start. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. 17 to the close. Okay? For kings and for all that are in authority, why? That we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, the God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us, who? We, his body. Beg your pardon. The ministry, uh, excuse me, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Go back to Second Timothy. Verses 3 and 4. Key to this. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. Yes, God is a God of mercy. God, will, God wants everyone to be saved. Question. Question. And some will answer this. Is everybody going to be saved? There are Christians out there who say, for example, they'll look at a guy like Dave Murphy and he's like, oh, he's saved, but he just doesn't know it. Try telling him that. Try telling him that. Okay? Try, try telling Aaron Ra that. Okay? You're saved and you just don't know it. That guy, if he had a billy club, he'd probably bludgeon you to death. Okay? All right? Who will have all men to be saved 
and come unto the knowledge of the truth. Then again, there are people that are always learning, but yet never able to come unto the knowledge of the truth. God wants all men to be saved. But see, brethren, but see, brethren, we as saints in Re uh, Revelation, in Romans chapter 12, verse 9, let love be without dissimulation. How do you love your enemies? By telling them truth. We already looked at that in, in this very chapter in Romans 12. Okay? We already, we already showed that. We have already demonstrated. How do you love your enemies? By here. Demonstrating, giving them the truth. Okay? Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. That's extreme hate. Cleave to that which is good. And there is none good but who? God. God wants all men to be saved. But what happens when someone has heard the truth, rejects it, and has made his choice to go after the devil? Hmm? Hmm? See, and that's where in prayer, dialogue with you and the Lord, between you and the Lord, he will lead you and guide you because the scripture tells us we don't know how to pray as we ought. We go to the Lord with stuff we're, okay, that we're thinking of, but you have a dialogue with the Father. Okay? No, you don't hear him audibly. Okay? Could you? Sure. Okay? But the audible voice you're going to hear, does it line up with this? Rightly divided, by the way. You Pentecostal nut job, huh? But what do you do? What do you do when there's someone who you know? <laughs> like like Pharaoh. A lot of people like to point at Pharaoh. But how cruel God... Pharaoh believed in his heart that he was a god. Pharaoh, you know the one in, the, uh, in Exodus? Pharaoh had... He was gone, dude. He, he wasn't even looking back. He was gone. Okay, that guy was gone. All right, so the Lord's like, okay, here, let me help you along in your folly, okay? He already made his choice. The, fa the Pharaohs, them, even atheists will back this up. The Pharaohs themselves believed they were incarnations of gods. What's one of the, what's the biggest lie today? Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You're, you're, you're your own god. Psalm 143. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness answer me, and in thy righteousness. And enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight shall no man living be justified. Oh, unless you're like a sinlessly perfect Englishman or a Calvinist or, or with certain select King James Bible-believing Christians or one of these nutjob Pentecostal guys who has seen it. Yeah. Crazy. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. He hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart within me is desolate. Talk about being broken. See, at one point, we were all enemies of God. But what happened? God got a hold of us. It broke us. Some may, may have been praying for you. Okay? Some. Were they actually saints? That's, that's, that's the question. Because I, I remember, I've, I used to say that there were people praying for me that the Lord would save me. And looking back now on some of these people that I was aware of, I don't know if they were actually saints, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, you, you were praying for me, huh? Dude, I, I okay, um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a babe anymore. I, I don't, I... I question whether or not you're actually saved. Okay? But, you know, there are some people who, who, have, who are saints, who pray for some of their uh, family members. Okay? Uh, yeah, brother, pray for her. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Pray for her. Of course. Of course. As the Lord guides you. As the Lord guides you. Okay. Remember that. People remember. I can't. Nor can any other man tell you who, how, why to pray for something. The only one who can is the Lord. Okay? Okay? Don't forget that. Oh, I've, that it's like, hey, can you pray for me, brother? Sure, I'll pray for you. That's different. It's like, you need to pray for this, this, and this, and you need to pray. Uh, it, it, excuse you? Uh, your what hurts? Uh, no, thank you. Get the hence. Okay? Remember that. Remember that. That's totally different than requesting, hey, brethren, I, I'm in a bad way. I need you to pray for me as the Lord will lead you. Please, this is what's happening. If you will, if the Lord leads you, pr please pray. That's a different thing. Okay? That's a different thing than this nonsense. Okay? Okay? Let's continue. <clears throat> I remember the days of old. I meditate on... Uh, we're picking up at verse 5. I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse, that means to think, on the work of thy hands. And you tie that into verse, uh, verse 5. You tie that into the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? Days of old. When the Lord was on the earth, his death, burial, and resurrection, his death on the cross, his blood shed, okay? I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. Silla. Hear me speedily, O Lord, my spirit faileth. Hide not thy face from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Distinction. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning, for in thee do I trust. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk, for I lift up my soul unto thee. Look at that verse. Thy loving kindness in the morning. Get out of blood. Flop! Out of bed. <laughs> like right over there. Oh, Lord, good morning. Thank you for today. Oh, Lord, why are you keeping me here? You know? Okay? Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. Oh, Lord, lead me and guide me today. Okay? A template kind of thing. You see that? You see that? And who's telling you this? I'm, I'm, not. I'm not. Scripture is. You see? Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. That's a lowercase s because this is in a different dispensation. Okay? you got to remember, the Psalms were written under the law. The majority of them were. Okay? Teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Quicken me, make me alive, O Lord, for thy name's sake, for thy righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. And of thy mercy cut off mine enemies, and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Paul says, yes, pray for all men. Right there now, you could say that is a dispensational difference. But here's the thing, brethren. Here's the thing. There does come a time when praying for someone who has made their time. For example, like Pharaoh. Pray for Pharaoh. The impossible. The impossible is possible with God. Yes. But it's not by coercion. Okay? You got to remember that. All right? Got to remember that. Would it, would it be... You, you tell me. Don't you think it would have been a little vain for someone to be praying for Pharaoh? Dude, that, dude, that guy gone. The impossible is possible with God. Absolutely. That, we can never deny that. 
We can never deny that. But, yeah, no, dude, when he's like, leaves you in the dust, and, and come on. Okay? And who is the one who dicks, dictates that to you? Me? Man? God forbid. No. Scripture. God. The Lord. Okay? Remember that. Don't you forget that, man. Don't you forget that. Someone could give you advice. Be like, well, you know, this is how I do it. But, you know, remember, prayer, especially like you flop out of bed or whenever it's just you and the Lord praying, that's you and the Lord. Okay? That's you and the Lord. Okay? It's between you guys. Okay? Remember that. Remember that, okay? Now go to Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1. All right? Isaiah chapter 1. The Lord, you know, man... Uh, one second, one second. Beg your pardon. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Likewise, the capitalist spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Okay? All right? Prayer is relational between you and the Father. You and I, hey, hey, I wake up in the morning, I flop my face down, and I have, you know, there's like, I have, you know, it's like I need to pray for Brother Jeff, I got to pray for Brother, you know, uh, uh, Brother Bobby and all those guys, got to pray for the brethren, pray for, yes, yes, but see, it's, it's, it's an organic living relationship with the Father. And you know what? I've been in prayer. How many of you have been in prayer? And all of a sudden, it's like, you get this thing that cannot be uttered. It's like, they're in prayer. It's like, you want me? I, why am I feeling this pull to pray for brother so-and-so? All of a sudden, I know for a fact that seven, like uh, our dear beloved uh, Alexander B. Hartley, he's even told me sometimes, about that kind of stuff where he's been praying for and all of a sudden something is like coming to his mind and heart. It's like, oh. And then you shift according as the Spirit guides you. Okay? All right? You got to remember that. And see, the problem is with a lot of these proponents of prescribed prayers and all this stuff, they don't have the Spirit in them to begin with. So they have to replace it with something else. <coughs> okay? Isaiah chapter 1, verses 4 and verse 6. A sinful nation. A people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should ye be stricken anymore? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick. The whole heart faint. From the sole of the foot even unto the head. There is no soundness in it. But wounds and bruises. And putrefying sores. They have not been closed. Neither bound up. Neither mollified with ointment. Until my mother died. I prayed for her. I did. She died and went to hell. Looking back, I mean, looking back, it's like coulda, woulda, shoulda. It's like that's a that's a useless, vain argument to to get involved in. But I mean, there you go. My mother. My mother. The impossible is possible with God. But my mother had gone past the point 
where she couldn't come back. Not that God could not save her. But once, the older you get, the old and foolish king thing, okay, the older you get, the harder it gets. It's like, dude, you think you're going to die on your deathbed, you're going to recant and actually get into heaven? Them cigarettes have rotted your brain, dude. Okay? All right? All that alcohol you get drunk on really rotted your brain. Okay? But I, I brought that up as, a, as an example for you. I mean, I prayed for my mother until she died. I did. And yes, yes, I was told. I knew that it was vanity. Okay? I did. I knew. You know how I know? Because I was told. Audibly, no. I knew. But I still did. You do with that whatever you will. Okay? You do you take that however you guys want to take that, okay? Alright? Like, well, if we would have had a prayer chain, God doesn't force anything on people. Because there might be 200 saints praying for Mr. Joe whatever, doesn't mean that the Lord's going to be so aggravated. It's like, okay, fine, because of all of you, I'm going to... Is man getting better? Hmm? Is man getting better? What, has man become a little god now that uh, since the death, burial, and resurrection? You see? And amen. Prayer moves mountains. Absolutely. Absolutely. But we get into a problem where we think that we can change God's mind by annoying him and taking out of context something that we have already seen. Just remember that. Now, go, uh, let's look at verses 13 on to verse 20 here. Okay? In Isaiah chapter 1. Why was God saying that of these people? The apple of his eye. Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with it. It's an iniquity. Even the solemn meeting. What do you think Christianity is? Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers I will not hear why your hands are full of blood now different dispensation but applicable for our instruction in righteousness wash you make you clean God's the one who does that today okay different dispensation put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes cease to do evil I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes uh, abstain from all appearance from evil Psst. Dispensational line cross there, okay? Learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Those are works. Different dispensation. Remember that. This is instruction in righteousness. Plead for the widow. One of my favorite sayings Come now and let us reason together. Seth the Lord. And what are we reading to? Verse 20. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be white as they shall be as wool, excuse me. And wool is generally white. Okay? Alright. Some you know, some of these heretics is like, you no, know, Jesus was a black man because his hair was like wool. 
And it's referring unto the color, the genius. All right. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devour, devoured with the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. 1 John chapter 4. And what we just looked at was people making religiosity their thing. 1 John chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Ye are uh, uh, 5 and 6. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And John 17, the Lord, the actual Lord's Prayer. Okay, check this out. Check this out. Why did Jesus say, I don't pray for the world? The world is, the world is in the hands of the wicked. Okay. But uh, let's let the scripture answer this. John 17, 8 unto 11. This, by the way, this is the Lord's Prayer. John 17, this is the Lord's Prayer. Okay? For I have given unto them the words which thou, hast, which thou gavest me. They have received them. And have known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. All are mine. All and all are mine. And excuse me. And all mine are thine. And thine are mine. And I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. And right away, 1 John chapter 5, verses 17 on to verse 19. All unrighteousness is sin. And there is a sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. Begotten of God, meaning born again. What does this mean? First John chapter 3, verses 7 on to verse 9. People come to verses like this and say, you got to stop sinning. Uh, Paul missed that with Romans chapter 7. No, this is not what it's not talking about sinless perfection in this life. You can't be sinless perfect. Uh, you can't be sinlessly perfect in this life. That's impossible. That's Im because the flesh lusteth against the spirit. Okay? Until we are caught up in heaven where this is no longer an issue, the skin suit, um, we're going to sin. But what is this talking about? John first John three, seven and on the nine. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. And the devil is a little g god of this world. Hey, brother, sister, remember, there's going to be a new earth and a new heaven. Okay? We're still on the first earth. But the world in its entirety? Is gone. The world, the world in itself is gone. Okay? All right? So when the Lord says, I don't pray for the world, the world's gone. The world itself cannot be reclaimed until second coming. And even then, during the kingdom of heaven, there's still going to be sin. But see, it's the new heaven and the new earth when sin and everything is gone. Okay? 
That, that's why, brother, he said, I pray not for the world. Well, let's keep reading. Okay? He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested, that, we, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, pay attention. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. His seed remaineth in him. The Holy Ghost, the Lord is that spirit. You know, Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwells within the saved, born again saint. You're born again because you're a new creature in Christ. You're a new creature because you have God the Father living in you. God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Lord is that Spirit, cannot sin. The Lord within you, that is the reference there, His seed remaineth in Him. You have an unction from the Holy One. And this is, uh, as it says in Ephesians chapter 1, okay, that's what this is talking about. Okay, the, the, you get these nut jobs who come around talking about you got to be sinlessly per perfect. You, you, I don't sin anymore. It's like, dude, that's not what this is talking about. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1, 13 and 14, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, it's not telling you that the person, like me, is sinlessly perfect. No. The one that is within you is sinlessly perfect. God that dwells within the saint can't sin. That's what that means. He that committed sin is of the devil. The lost people, your father is the devil. Who's in you? The devils. Okay? Not the devil himself. I mean, it could be. <laughs> okay? And he's not in macaroni guy like that idiot Jeffrey Greider tells you. Okay? <laughs> Give me a break. But, uh, you know, you're not saved. Your father is the devil. Okay? All right? So he that committed sin is of the devil. That, you know, you lost people. If you feel it in your heart to go ahead and condone sin and do sin. Uh, that's because who's in you? That spirit of Antichrist. That spirit of Antichrist. Uh, you're a new creature. You got God the Father in you. Okay? For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this per uh, uh, verse 8. Okay. No, verse 9. Excuse me. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. Being born again. The Lord within you. Okay? For his seed remaineth in him. The Holy Ghost. And he cannot sin. He is born of God. Okay? See, you're born again. You're a new creature when the Lord seals you with himself. That makes you a new creature. And you are born again of God. God within you cannot sin. That's what that means. You understand? Watch out for these. Hey, I got I to gotta, gotta get credit where it's due. Even the sleazy believists can bury these sinless perfection idiots. Even they can. That's, that shows you how stupid it is for someone to come around. you got to stop sinning. Like, uh, what was his name? Comfort and uh, uh, Paul Washer tiptoes on that sinless perfection stuff. That's why you stay away from them. Back to 1 John 5. Back to 1 John 5. Uh, or, no, where were we reading before we, uh, uh, we were reading about the... Uh, yeah, 17 on verse 19. Okay. Verse 18. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not, but he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And you read Job chapter 1 and 2. Satan cannot afflict you unless he's given permission of God. Okay? And we know that we are of God. Look at that verse, brother, sister. And the whole world lieth in wickedness. The whole world lieth in wickedness. That's why Jesus didn't pray for the world. 
<laughs> we, we are his ambassadors, okay? We are the thing, you know, by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe, okay? He is using we, his body. The world's gone. And the Lord knows that better than any of us. Okay? That, that's, that's what he meant by that, brother. Okay? And uh, 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Uh, we already read that. <laughs> 1 John chapter 2, 15 and 17. On to 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away. And the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. That's why the Lord's like, I'm not, don't pray for the world. The world is gone, okay? The world is gone. And see, they are of the world, therefore they speak of the world. Christianity is of the world, okay? You can make all your petty little arguments all day and all night. Prove me wrong today. Go ahead. Go ahead, okay? All right? And when you got one who is of the world, heard the truth and doesn't want doesn't want it okay you know in scripture we're told okay if they won't hear you go to the next city shake off the your raiment and the dust of your feet and go to the next one you read in the book of Acts Acts chapter 16 where the Holy Ghost forbade them to go speak to those guys over there but it, you know it's like hey go speak, speak to them over there okay We are to pray for all men, absolutely. But see, the Lord's going to dictate to you. It's like, what? Okay, Jeremiah chapter 6. Now check this out, check this out. We're going to do a small little gleaning here. Okay, but check this out. Jeremiah 6. Don't, don't let this confuse you. Okay? Who's in charge here? The Lord? Like I told you. I prayed for my mother, even when I knew that it was vanity. I still did it. I still did it. I did. I don't, I don't want my mom in hell, but she is. When someone has made their choice and is so gone, Jeremiah 6, verse... 15. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay. They were not at all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore they shall fall among them that fall. At the time that I visit them, they shall be cast down, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 7, 8 on to verse 16. Behold, Ye trust in lying words that cannot profit. Just believe and receive. Be part of Christ's church that he founded. I'm elect. I'm a Baptist. Whatever. Will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense unto Baal, and walk after other gods whom ye know not? And come... And stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are delivered to do all these abominations. All things are lawful for me. Right? 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 You, you go and yoke yourself up with the Vatican once a year, cause all these problems. And then it's like, come to, and then you're like, Well, and come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, we are delivered to do all these abominations. All things are lawful for me. And yes, they are. That's undeniable. But come on. Come on. Let's continue. Is this house which is called by my name become a den of robbers in your eyes? 
Behold, even I have seen it, saith the Lord. Even he has seen it. And he sees everything. Okay. By the way, this is instruction in righteousness. A house, they had a building back then. Uh, God does not dwell in temples made with hands nowadays. Okay. But go ye now unto my place, which was in Shiloh, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it for the wickedness of my people Israel. And now because ye have done all these works, saith the Lord, and I spake unto you, rising up early and speaking, but ye heard not. And I called you, but ye answered not. Therefore will I do unto this house, which is called by my name, wherein ye trust, and unto the place which I gave to, your fa to you and to your fathers, as I have done to Shiloh. This house where ye trust. Oh, how many of you Christians trust in a building? Oh, no, I don't. Yes, you do. You, did, you ex display it in your countenance and your walk. Okay? Your mouth says one thing. Your actions say something totally different there, Christian. Yeah. Oh, and, and what we just read. It's like, well, I've been confirmed. I've been baptized. I had the cookie. I just believed and received. I helped a little old lady across the street. I gave money to so-and-so's ministry. Yeah, so I could write it off on my taxes later. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, come on. Okay? A replacement. Because something isn't there that ought to be there. So they replace it with something else. See? Anti. To be against also to replace 15 and where are we reading to verse 16 and I will cast you out of my sight as I have cast out all your brethren even the whole seed of Ephraim therefore pray not thou for this people neither lift up cry nor prayer for them neither make intercession to me for I will not hear thee now what we just read about leading up to that. Why did God say that? Because he knew that these people had already gone past the point where they cannot come back. Not that the Lord can't save them. It's never that. Dude, God doesn't force his will upon you. Okay? He doesn't. You have to make the choice. If you didn't, you'd be a Calvinistic robot. God doesn't want a robot. Okay? And also, while we're in this, uh, uh, Jeremiah 8, verse 12. Again. Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay. They were not at all ashamed. Neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall. In the time of their visitation they shall be cast down Seth the Lord. How many Christians have you run into who will justify any kind of sin because they like it? At least a selfieist like Dade Murphy has the nerve to at least publicly it's like, yeah, I like my sin. Can't do nothing with it. And see, and there's again. Okay, there, there again. Okay. And if the Lord could save Mr. Dade Murphy, he could. Obviously, the Lord's the one who's going to have to do it because when you got a guy who's like, I like my sin, okay, <laughs> uh, what, 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 what? okay, but then again, brethren, prayer is a dialogue, okay, we know not how to pray as we ought. The Spirit itself, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is that spirit. Okay? He will lead you and guide you in prayer. He does. He does. It's a two-way street. Okay? All right? All right? Now, Jeremiah 11, verses 11 on to 17. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. 
Then shall the cities of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense, but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. Look at that. Now look at verses 11 and 12. It's like when it says right there, and though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. You might be thinking, well, isn't that kind of cruel? But, but, but look at the very next verse. Then shall the cities of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto other gods unto whom they offer incense. So they have this kind of pragmatic approach. It's like, okay, uh, okay, I'm going to pray. Okay, that doesn't work. I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to go. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Willing to do anything so long as it works. Pragmatism, I forget where the video is that we talked about that. Charles Lawson. Okay, I know some of you like Charles Lawson. And whatever. He's, he, he teaches a form of pragmatism. Hey, if it works, must be right. Well, C4 works. <laughs> but it could also be used to bring down, oh, certain places in New York City. <laughs> the time stamp with these guys. Anyway, let's continue. For according to the number of thy cities were thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, even have ye even have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to burn incense unto Baal, Baal. Therefore, pray not for this people, neither lift up a cry or pray for them, for I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. Yeah. Which Jesus? Okay. There's only, yes, there's only one Jesus that saves. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. Hallelujah. But what Jesus is being offered? Oh, the Jesus, the second, the, look at the finger, the second person of the Trinity, that Jesus? Or the Jesus who has no uh, requirements, who's all lovey-dovey, who loves you unconditionally? Huh? What about the Jesus of the morons? Mormonism? Huh? Oh, what about the Jesus of the Jehovah's Witnesses? Huh? What about the Jesus of the charismatic Pentecostals? Which Jesus? Huh? There is only one Jesus that saves. Amen. Absolutely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From the authorized version of the scriptures. It, from the authorized version, you learn of who the real Jesus is. Okay? Which Jesus? Which Jesus are you guys talking about? You ask Christians that? Eight times out of ten. Eight times out of ten. You're going to be told about the Roman Catholic Jesus. I, 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 I put that in experience, practice, Lots of it. You know, you guys who are all up in arms about uh, getting right scripturally with your terms. Hey, have you put it into practice? Huh? You keep using the rapture. Rapture. When you know what it actually is called scripturally. But then you, you justify, well, they don't know. Well, whose, pro whose fault is that? It's yours. Okay? We put this into practice for now quite a few years okay for a few years at least okay we've put this into practice taking these things out of our vocabulary and speaking rightly according to the scriptures about them it's not that difficult people okay it's not that difficult the whole whole makeup of a conversation between someone when you say, I'm not a Christian, I'm a saint, okay, that the whole dynamic changes, okay? It's not as hard as you think. But you guys are just steeped in your traditions, man. Yeah. Yeah. But continuing here in Jeremiah chapter 11, 
Verse 14. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them. For I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble. And we see a form of pragmatism in verses 11 and 12, where they, okay, we go to the Lord, he's not listening. We'll go to the Shimu, we'll go to Ishtar, we'll go to the Jesus of Rome, we'll go to the Jesus of the Pentecostal, we'll go to the Catholic Jesus, we'll go to the Lutheran Jesus. We'll, we'll, we'll do this until we find something that works. You see why the Lord says that he's not praying for the world? What hath my beloved to do in mine house, seeing she hath wrought lewdness with many, and the holy flesh is passed from thee? When thou doest evil, then thou rejoicest. I like that verse because you look at these streaming Christians who take, oh, okay, they're these sleazy believers. That idiot Tom is a great example of this. He'll take on anyone and talk with anyone. <laughs> what lewdness with many? Okay. Anyway. The Lord called thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. With the noise of a great tumult, he hath kindled fire upon it, and the branches of it are broken. For the Lord of hosts that planted thee hath pronounced evil against thee for the evil of the house of Israel and of the house of Judah which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense unto Baal. Look at, look at today. Christianity, it's of the world. Therefore they speak of the world and the world heareth them. When somebody goes past a point of no return. Again, it's not that the Lord can't save them. But it's not by force. They have to make the right choices. And <laughs> with evidence, my mother, that devil from England, uh, several of my other people here in America that I'm, I'm aware of, you know, uh, Elmer Fudd from New York, Unfortunately, probably Mr. Sunken Eyed. These guys have gone so far that to turn back, the impossible is possible with God. And if the Lord leads you to pray in that manner for someone like that, then praise the Lord. Okay? All right? Okay? Now, Isaiah 2, Isaiah 2, verses 5 on to verse 9. We're almost done. We're almost done. He said at the beginning, is man getting better or is man getting worse? Has man instantly gotten better since the death, burial, and resurrection? Isaiah 2, 5 on to 9. O house of Jacob, come ye, and let us walk in the light of the Lord. Therefore thou hast forsaken thy people, the house of Jacob, because they be replenished from the east, and are soothsayers like the Philistines, and they please themselves in the children of strangers. Horish, like all kinds of things. Their land also is full of silver and gold. Neither is there any end of their treasures. The land is also full of horses. Neither is there any end of their chariots. Oh, oh, and you can make a really good tie-in with, oh, let's, let's do that. Isaiah 30. Isaiah, um, oh, Isaiah 31. Verses 1 on verse 3. Great tie-in here. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Egypt, type of the world. And stay on horses. And trust in chariots, because they are many. And in horsemen, because they are very strong. But they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he also is wise and will bring evil, and will not call back his words. But will arrive, but will arise against the house of the evildoers, and against the help of them that work iniquity. Now the Egyptians are men, and 
and not God. And their horses, flesh, and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall, and he that is hoping shall fall down. And they all shall fail together. Remember in Romans, we saw about how uh, misery likes company, as it were. Let's continue. Verse 8 in Isaiah chapter 3. Their land also is full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. And the mean man boweth down, and the great man humbleth himself. Therefore, Give them not. And, and who are these mean man and humble man or the great man humble themselves? Like uh, the tales of the mafia murderers going to a Jesuit priest and looking all reverent, right? right? And these businessmen that go to the, the uh, Basuto shrine or whatever and do their little whatever. Let's end with Acts chapter 8, which I think should really, really, really drive this home to you. Shimon the sorcerer, as he's affectionately called. There are whack jobs out there who tell you this man was saved because he believed. And I feel bad for you guys uh, who say that the guy, Shimon the sorcerer, in Acts chapter 8, he was saved because he believed. Because when we look at verses 20 under verse 24, that's kind of like a, oh, no, he wasn't saved. But because to perpetuate your heresy, you guys, you're, you're already sunk into it. But it's like you come to this, like, dude, that, that guy wasn't saved. Shimon the sorcerer, you know, he believed. He was baptized and he followed Philip and all that. Yeah, but he was never saved. Check this out. Now, this Shimon the sorcerer, who was not saved, offered Peter money so that he could have the gift of the Holy Ghost, so he could lay hands on people and they could get the Holy Ghost. Hence, him reclaiming his high seat of authority as some great one. Because you look at verse 9. But there was a certain man called Shimon, which before in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Okay? Verse, 13, uh, verse 12. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, spiritual, and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. So see, the Lord came to town through Philip and dethroned Shimon. Shimon followed along. It's like, oh, what are these guys doing? I want this. Then he, 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 he it's like uh, uh, verse 13. Then Shimon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, hey, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Okay. Oh, hey, he believed. And he was baptized. And see, this is why these heretics, they come to this and they have to sink their teeth and stay on this nonsense that this guy was actually saved. He wasn't. <laughs> he wasn't. Because you read from verse 20 on to verse 24. Let's read for context 18 on to 24 now. And when Shimon saw that through laying on the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. He offered them money not be, because he wanted to reclaim his place of prominence. He wasn't a saved man. Question. He wasn't saved, and he was thinking only of his rear end. And it is said that through this guy that oh, uh, Nas was like a founding father of Gnosticism or something like that. I don't know the validity of that, so don't quote me on that. But after this, in history, this very Shimon proved to be a real pain in the derriere to the saints, the Church of God. Okay? And when Shimon saw that through laying on of the, hand, of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands, 
he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. He was his own God. He wanted it only so he could elevate himself to his exalted position. Repent therefore of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. He was not broken at all. The only thing that was happening in his butt was hurt because he lost his position. Look at his answer. Look at his response. If this man were a saved man and you get a rebuke like that, you, everything should have like, oh, find yourself a corner or find yourself something and you get your face on that ground, see. And it's like, Lord! <laughs> okay? But what did Shimon do? What did Shimon do? Then answered Shimon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me. You pray for me. Well, I go on doing whatever I want to do. You go ahead. Doesn't hurt, huh? Hey, if it works, right? Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which have spoken come upon me. Why didn't he pray himself? Because he wasn't saved. That's going to be it for this little video. That great question, brother. Ultimately, yes, we, uh, man, I need a haircut. <laughs> and I'm afraid to cut my own hair. <laughs> but, uh, and my wife is also terribly afraid cut my hair too. <laughs> She's like, I ain't doing that. What if I mess it up? Okay. But anyway, yes, what Paul said, you know, that prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Prayer was not the only thing there in that verse. But yes, but see, who prayer is an organic relational thing between you and the Lord. If Lord wants you to pray for someone, uh, he'll let you know. He, he does that. Okay? But there again, for an example, why did he say, pray not for the, I, I pray not for the world? The world is gone. And these devils, they are of the world, therefore the world heareth them. There comes a time when someone has gone past the point of no return. And you might, and this is a valid argument, you might be like, well, somebody's got to pray for him. You're right. And if the Lord has, is leading you to pray for someone who is far gone, who, like, like I said again, the example of me and my mother. I prayed for my mother until she was dead. She's in hell. And I knew that it was vain. I knew. But my mother, you know, it's like, hey, the impossible is possible with God. Okay? The Lord is the one. The Lord Jesus Christ. God our Father. He is the one. Who will direct you in prayer. See and lost people don't understand this. Because the Lord isn't in them. And we were all lost before we were saved. Okay. See that thing of brokenness. Being brought to the destruction. Of your widow old self. And then you cry out, save me. Yes, the Lord saves you, seals you. And as we saw in Romans chapter 8, okay, we don't know how to pray for as we ought, but groanings that cannot be uttered. Like we've said, you know, how many of you have all of a sudden in prayer been like, oh, you want me to, I had this happen recently actually. You know, for our dear brother from Oregon, you know, um, just pr out of all, you know, and I pray for him. We pray for a lot of people. <laughs> we do. We pray for a lot of saints. But, um, you know, out of nowhere, you know, it's like, pray for him, you know. But he's a saint. As far as praying for lost people, um, I, I, have, I pray for lost people, yes. 
But, but, again, like the guy in England who's gone, you know, the Inquisitor from New York, you know, guys who have clearly demonstrated that they're gone, no, I don't pray for them. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay? If somebody has to, maybe the Lord is the one who is guiding you to do that. Who knows? That's between you and him. Okay? So I hope this answers your question. And, um, you know, like I said, you have a family member who's lost, who's kind of deceived, you know, as the Lord leads and guides. Okay? So thank you for watching this. If you do, we're going to get this uploaded. Please keep us in your prayers as we pray for many of you. And Lord willing, we'll see you in the next video.